plate. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Yes. Beautiful. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Well, thank you, you know, so much for all of these wonderful testimonies where we give honor, where it's due. And I, I love Father's Day, <laughs> you know, because we celebrate all different types of holidays here in the great country, United States of America. But Father's Day is, you know, real special to me. I, I have a son, has a beautiful family. I have a daughter. She has a beautiful family. Received a wonderful text from my daughter this morning. But it just means so much, you know, like our brother was saying, you know, we come from a different time, different age, a little more challenging when we grew up. And as we look back, we, you know, we want our kids to, you know, everything that we poured into them, you know, to, to come to light. And, and I trust in, in your lives you see your family, you know, doing that. So I, I think I'm just going to stay on the lower level today. Is that okay, uh, Justin? Okay, thank you so much. And to share some, uh, I believe, inspirational thoughts from the Word of the Lord. I have a humorous story. I always enjoyed listening to Dr. Jack Van Impe. He's, he's gone on to be with the Lord. Uh, Bible prophecy. He was walking Bible. He just knew so many passages of Scripture. So one day he was sharing this story right on the uh, program itself that there was this uh, Amish community and, and the grandfather and his son, the grandfather decided, let's go to the city. He said, I'd like to show you uh, what's in the city. And, you know, the Amish people are uh, wonderful people, but, you know, they're sort of uh, stay to themselves and, you know, have their way of doing things. So they made their way to the city. And they saw the cars and everything that was going by, and they saw this tall building. And so the grandfather said to the son, he took him by there, and said, let's go in and, and, and just look around. And as he went in, he noticed that there was this elderly lady, and she had a cane, and uh, she got into the elevator. And the elevator started to ascend, and he was watching first floor, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth. And then he came back down, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and the door opened. And out came this beautiful, attractive lady. Grandfather says to his son, quick, go home and get grandma. <laughs> just a, a humorous story, you know, just uh, to let you know that uh, there is humor in the kingdom of God. Uh, I'd like to share with you this morning, it's found in uh, Genesis chapter 5, reading verse 24. And I'd like to share with you concerning Enoch. The scripture says in Genesis chapter 5, verse 24, And Enoch walked with God. He walked with God. And it goes on to say that, he walked with God in such a way that God actually took him. There are two individuals in the scriptures that did not taste of death. One is Enoch and the other is Elijah. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you, Lord, for your presence today. Lord, we so appreciate these testimonies that were given by these wonderful people, Lord. We give honor where it's due today. Bless our, our dads, our, our grandfathers. May they enjoy this day. We, we recognize them. We thank you for them. And Lord, as your spokesperson this morning, I, I just ask, Lord, that you would help me. Lord, you've been so good to me, Lord. I, I thank you for your goodness. All the churches that I've had the opportunity to pastor through the years. Lord, different ones that we're part of our staff that are in full-time ministry. Lord, I, I praise you, Lord, that the word of the Lord can go forth. And Lord, it will not return until it's accomplished its purpose. We thank you, Lord, for Solid Rock Assembly of God. Lord, they're, as they're in a pastoral search, Lord, for a shepherd. Lord, you have that right person in mind. And so, Lord, we're excited today. 
Lord, this is your church. You are sovereign. Lord, you're guiding it. You're directing it. Bless the church council. Lord, give them wisdom far beyond their years. Give them guidance, Lord, in the way that you would have them to go. And Lord, it's my prayer that you're preparing the servant, Lord, his wife, his family, if it be, Lord, to come to Bolton Landing. Lord, we believe, Lord, that you're in control, and we thank you for it, for we ask it all in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. Praise the Lord. I'd like to speak to you this morning on building a relationship with the Lord. Building a relationship with the Lord. Now, some have mentioned, and I have experienced it, that we thank God for the experiences that we have with God. And experiences are good. But I've learned in my life that experiences come and they go. They come and they go. We read about a Bible character here, Enoch, and the scripture says that he had built a relationship with God. Now, if you look at chapter 5 of this uh, scriptural text, you'll realize that there are other Bible figures that are here, and the scripture says that they lived a certain amount of years and they died. Now, this type of dispensation at this particular time, prior to the flood, that people lived a lot longer. They lived 800 years. In one case here, we read about Methuselah, which was the son of Enoch. He lived 969 years. I wonder if he got Social Security. <laughs> he lived a long time, but it was prior to the flood, so it was a different type of dispensation. We're living in a dispensation of grace where whosoever can call upon the name of the Lord and be saved. But in the case of Enoch, the scripture says for 300 years, he walked with God. He was building a relationship with the Lord. Now, the Lord mentions to us in the New Testament, in the parable, which is a short story with a hidden meaning, that he said some would walk with the Lord for a short time. Others would walk longer. And others would walk to the very end. I want to be in the crowd that walks with the Lord to the very end. Can you say amen? That's the crowd that I want to be in. And as we look at the life of Enoch, he had a testimony. We read in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 5, that Enoch had such a testimony that it pleased God that he was a preacher of righteousness. He was a preacher of righteousness. And so he had a testimony. It was pleasing God. He was preaching in a day that was filled very similar to the day you and I are living in, where Christians are mocked for their belief. Many are going through tremendous persecution, but some just look for an experience with God. They want God in the moment, and we read about it when someone's involved in an accident and they begin to interview them. They said, I called on God. It was an experience. But I believe what God is looking for is a relationship. We're walking with him. And the scripture says in Hebrews chapter 5 and then verse 6, for without faith, it is impossible to please God. Without faith. And I believe that Enoch had that faith. He believed that God was all that he claimed to be. He walked with him. He was a preacher of righteousness. He stood against the evil of his day. And I believe you and I, as we are living in similar times, that God is looking for a church and believers, not just for an experience, but he's looking for those that are building a relationship, who are walking with him, who are preaching, who are standing against the evilness of this day, that we're redeeming the time because the days are evil. 
And then I look at the life of Elijah in 2 Kings chapter 2, verses 1 and 2. It says that Elijah was a man of God. He had walked with God, walked with him. And he had an individual that he was a mentor to Elijah. He was Elisha. And the time came for the prophet of God that God was going to call him home. Many have asked, did Elijah know that he was going to be taken up to be with God? And I believe from Scripture, only you can answer that. But the chariot came, a chariot of fire. And Elisha, as he was looking at Elijah, and he was ascending, and he was going to be with God, that Elisha could look at his uh, mentor and say, yes, he had this testimony that he walked with God. And I believe as we study the words of the Lord, as we walk with the Lord, that the day will come when you and I, if we're alive, when the trump of God sounds, the scripture says, as we're walking with him, that day will come when we've walked with the Lord a little bit further. And he says to each of us, come, you come with me. You're a little bit closer to my home. Are you getting excited? Jesus is coming. He's coming back for a church without spot and without wrinkle. He's looking for a live stone in which he is the chief cornerstone. We can live for him. We can let our light shine for the glory of God. I want a relationship with him. I want to walk with him every day. I want to talk with him every day. I want to receive the word of the Lord in my spirit, in my heart. Thus saith the Lord, that's what he wants to do for you. That's what he wants to do for you. A relationship. A relationship with the Lord. And as we build this relationship, I'd like to share with you three points. Number one, to build this relationship, We've got to spend time with the Lord. Uh, My wife and I, we've been married a a short time, I think uh, two and a half years. But prior to that, we spent a a year together, you know, just getting to know each other. And, And the more time we spent together, the more we got to know more about each other. And she's still I I keep telling her how good I am, but it's taking time for it to sink in. (laughs) That's just to be humorous. But here, I'm here to tell you the relationship with the Lord. We've got to spend time with the Lord. We've got to know who he is. He spoke the world into existence. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. That's the relationship that I'm building. I want to know who God is. For the scripture says that with God, all things are possible. Are you with me? And as we build this relationship, we begin to receive it in our spirit that no matter what the situation might be, because of your relationship with him, all things are are possible. With men, it might be impossible. But if God be for for you and not against you, you can just believe and trust the Lord because you know him. You love him. You're walking with him. Praise God today. You're building that relationship with Jesus Christ. Oh, Lord, this morning, may we just take time to get to know you, who you are. Uh, By marriage, when we got married, my wife has uh, two uh, Australian shepherds, and they're big guys. I'm telling you, one guy weighs 75 pounds, and he can throw me all around the house, I'm telling you. He's big. And then he has a a stepbrother, okay, and he is an Aussie doodle. His name is uh, Chase. And so every day uh, we have breakfast together, and every day it's my uh, desire. I go down and I pray. I try to pray for about 30 minutes every day, go down, read the scriptures. So now I got two prayer partners with me. Number one is Jacques, and number two is Chase. And, and they know exactly, I said, you know, it's time to pray. And, and they come down, 
and, and they'll just be so quiet and so good, and I'm praying, they're looking at me. Then I'll read the Bible, and, and then I'll close the Bible. As soon as I do that, they get up and they get rambunctious and they're so excited. They said, praise God, prayer time's over. <laughs> and we can go outside. And they run around and have a great time. But every day I spend time with the Lord in churches that I've pastored. When I had my back against the wall, when I needed miracles financially because of my relationship with the Lord. I knew I was praying to one who owns the cattle on a thousand hills, and every need was met. When I prayed for families that were ready to fall apart because of uh, divisions that had come in the home, with God all things are possible. I knew the Lord. I know he never fails. I know his hand is not shortened, that he cannot reach out and save. I know his ear is never too heavy to hear the faintest cry. I've seen miracle after miracle. I'm building a relationship with the Lord. I'm spending time with him. He He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He never changes. I'm excited. I want to roll up my sleeves. And when I say, Lord, you can count on me. You can count on this church. We believe for Bolton Landing and the surrounding areas that God is not done. He's about to do a great and mighty work. Why? Because we spend time with him. We believe in him, that he's the great I am. He's the alpha. He's the omega. And we love him every step of the way. Hallelujah. So number two, we remain in him. We read in John chapter 15, if you abide in the vine as we are the branches, we just have that assurance that ye have not chosen me, but I've chosen you, that you should go forth and bear fruit and that your fruit should remain. I had this uh, wonderful sister. She had... Uh, I think COPD or emphysema. Uh, she had the portable oxygen, oxygen and she lived in a uh, sort of like a low-income area. And, uh, she was attending the church, and she called me. She says, Pastor, I, just, I have to do something. I have to do something for the Lord. And she's building this relationship, building it with the Lord. And, and so I went up there, and I, I, I says, Martha, you tell me. What, what would you like to do? She says, well, look. I'm in this uh, lower income project area. I I'd like to maybe just see if I get some boys and girls, maybe to be interested in church, come to Sunday school. The scripture says, if I remain in the Lord, and I'm praying back at the church, Lord, Lord, fill these Sunday school rooms. And I go down to the lower auditorium and reach out. And Lord, w w we need a miracle. And this is the church in Corning. Uh, years ago, Hurricane Agnes had gone through it, wiped the church completely out, uh, devastated it, was trying to recover. Then the pastor had a heart attack and went on to be with the Lord. And, and, and so I'm following him, coming in. People are still recovering from the traumatic experience of that tremendous hurricane. And I said, yes, okay, Martha, you do whatever you feel God is leading you to do. And, and so she called me. She said, would you come up this coming Sunday? I came up. She had three or four kids, got them in the car, brought them back to the church. This just kept going. Then I was making two trips. I got tired of two trips. She says, send a bus. We sent the bus up. She filled the bus because she knew who God was. She remained in him. She believed, and that one bus led to another bus in the church. And as we prayed over those Sunday school rooms that were empty, filled with mud from that terrible hurricane and went through it, and removed it, that those rooms were filled with people, boys and girls. And we built a Sunday school of over 200, and they were coming from every direction. Why? Because we knew who God was, that it was his church. And as we remained in him, we believe we could do all things through Christ who strengthens us. And I'm saying to you today, it is time for you and I to build a relationship, not just an experience, but take it deeper and take it wider and believe God that the best days for you and for the church and for your family lie ahead of us. 
Can you say amen? Hallelujah. Oh, praise God. And last of all, as we look at this passage of Scripture, that Enoch, as he walked with God, the day came because he had this testimony that it pleased God, and he remained in God. But in you and I, in the New Testament, we spend time with God and with his Son, the Lord Jesus Christ and the blessed Holy Spirit. We remain in him, and then we love him. That's the last point, to love God. Jesus said, to love the Lord thy God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, with all of your mind, with all of your strength. We know that commandment. But the second is like unto it. For the Lord said to love your neighbor as yourself. Friends, we need to love people. Love people. I was ordained so many years ago, and they were going down each candidate, and we had to say a few words. Never forget this. Touches me right now. As they were coming down, and they asked me what words I would have to say to share with that tremendous body that was gathered there before they prayed over all of those candidates and myself. I said, I just want a shepherd's heart. I want to love people. I want to feel what they're going through. And just recently, I mentioned to my wife, I said, you know, as I look back, I pray that I was a blessing to the people that God called me to serve. I know I've came up short in different areas. And friends, this is what it's all about when we build the relationship. Jesus looked over Jerusalem, and the scripture says he wept for it. He knew what was in store for it. And I believe we've become so insensitive to the needs that are out there today because it just seems to be so upside down. But I pray in your life as you're building this relationship with the Lord, you're getting to know him for who he is. You're remaining in him. And then you're loving him. And as you love him, God helps you to see people that need a shepherd, that need an encouraging word, that you love God, yes, but you love people, that you reach out and you touch him. I think of the woman with the issue of blood. The Bible says in the Gospel of Matthew that she had an illness, a sickness, She had spent all of the money that she had, but in the process, she grew worse. But one day, Jesus was coming through. Hallelujah. And she reached out, and she touched the hem of his garment. And there was a crowd around him. Jesus stopped. He said, who touched me? The woman said, it was me. And he said, your faith has made you whole. And so I believe as we celebrate this tremendous day of Father's Day, let's continue to build a relationship. Build a relationship. How do we do it? We love the Lord. We get to know who he is. We remain in him. And then we love God. And as we love God, we begin to love people. And I believe if we do that, experiences will come and go. But your relationship, as you continue to build it, will be walking with him someday. And the trump of God is going to sound. Are you with me? Are you with me? Stay with me. Okay, stay with me. And the dead in Christ are going to rise first. And if we're alive when that trump of God sounds, we're going to be caught up together. And so shall we ever be with the Lord for all of eternity. What a future. What a hope we have. Can you say amen this morning? Can you say praise the Lord? Can you say, oh, thank you, Lord. Oh, praise God, I love you. And as this word was shared today, and I looked at Enoch, and I looked at Elijah, 
Perhaps that could be you or I. If we go the way of the grave, that's okay. We know that eternal life has been promised to us. And so as we close this message today, let's just bow our heads and just take a few minutes here and search our heart. And maybe for some of us, we've had some wonderful experiences with God. Wonderful experiences. But it seems like experiences just, they seem to come and go. We're up, we're down. But the Lord is looking for us to build a relationship. Build a relationship. Get to know who God is. Remain in him. You are the branch. He is the vine. Love God and then love people. That's how you build a relationship. And while our heads are bowed and our eyes are closed, Lord, just bless this congregation. Lord, I pray that they'll build that relationship with you. Enoch, walk with God. And he had this testimony. It pleased God. And God took him. Elijah, walk with God. He had this testimony. And God took him. We can put our name in there. The day might come when we're alive and the trump sounds. We walk with God. And God is going to take us. So just take a minute or so. Search your heart and say, Lord, help me to build this relationship. Help me to build it right now. I receive the word. I receive it into my spirit. Right now, Lord, I'm going on feelings. And, and Lord, they will come and they go. But I'm going to build that relationship. In the name of Jesus, I pray this. And everyone said, Amen. Just before we close with a chorus, maybe we could just sing, it's an oldie. To be like Jesus, to be like Jesus, all I am is to be like him. All through life's journey, from earth to glory, all I am is to be like him. Would you stand with me? Amen. Amen. We have one more.